How's it going guys? It's your boy James back here one more time with another video and today I decided to go through the top 5 F1 secrets and strategies that have been used by F1 teams during pre-season testing so let's go through them shall we? Back in the days, most teams were setting normal lap times during pre-season testing, but some backmarker teams used to put a little amount of fuel inside their cars compared to the other teams and eventually started setting up super quick lap times compared to the other teams. This made those backmarker teams seem like they have improved from the previous season and have a chance of actually getting some points next season. And lots of sponsors became very interested in sponsoring them. However, when the season began, those backmarker teams were eventually still at the back of the grid. Famous examples of this include the Prost Teams' AP04 car and the Jordan's 191 F1 car, which were super fast during pre-season testing, but when the season actually began, they were a couple of seconds behind the other teams. This is when teams eventually try to slow down their cars during pre-season testing so that other teams wouldn't know where a certain team was in the packing order. To do this, teams used to put more fuel inside their cars to slow them down or they wouldn't go flat out during a lap and just maybe do one or two sectors quickly and one very slowly. Examples of this include the Bron GP001 car in 2009 which was so quick and faster than the others during the pre-season testing back in 2009 due to their new and controversial double diffuser system. So they tried everything to slow down the car as to reduce the backlash from their new double diffuser system and hide the true performance from the other teams. Also Mercedes does this every now and then, such as back in 2009 when Ferrari looked super quick and faster than them during pre-season testing, but when the season had started Ferrari could even come close to them. In 2010, Red Bull came to pre-season testing with a brand new RB6 F1 car, which then eventually went and won that year's championship due to its famous blown diffuser system. However, during pre-season testing, Red Bull decided to add some exhaust stickers on both sides of the car. These stickers were placed just on top of the real exhaust, and they were used to hide the real exhaust from the other teams, as a lot of teams back then used to hire photographers to take spy shots of the competitors' cars. During 2014 and 15, the Williams F1 car was super quick and managed to finish third in the constructor standings, unlike nowadays. This was mostly due to their super quick Mercedes engines that they were using, but also they had a secret onboard wheel rim heating device inside the car. This made the car extremely quick and fast during the first laps of a race, or just after the safety car period has ended, as it allowed the tires to be much more hotter and grippier than the other cars. Williams tried to hide this new device by calling it default, which meant nothing so that they could freely talk about it on the radio without anyone really understanding what it really was. Also, Williams had plenty of secret buttons on the steering wheel which helped the car and they didn't want other teams to notice and just gave these buttons basic names such as brakes, even though these buttons weren't made for the brakes but for something else. During 2015, 18 and 2019, Red Bull came into pre-season testing with a camo-like livery which looked quite amazing honestly. However, these camo liveries had a purpose and that was to hide the car's aerodynamics and other important parts of the car from the other teams. They did quite a good job as the camo really managed to hide various features of a brand new car. Bonus babes! Some teams didn't want to just hide different parts of the cars, but they also wanted to hide their drivers. For example, back in the 2000s, Sauber wanted to keep the identity of the super talented Kimi Raikkonen a secret from the other teams such as Ferrari and McLaren. Therefore, the team used to call Kimi Raikkonen the Eskimo, so that other teams wouldn't know his real identity. Also, back in 1992, Alan Prost did some F1 car tests with Leger to see if he wanted to maybe return back to F1. However, he drove the 1992 Leger F1 car whilst wearing Eric Comas' red helmet and a white outfit and tried to hide his real identity. But at the end, people managed to recognize his facial features through his visor. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you liked this video and if you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And I think I am off to watch F1 preseason testing. And yeah, that is an adios from me.